Thank you, Deb, so much. Thank you, Brockton Democrats, for coming out here today. What an incredible turnout for a Sunday morning. But the thing about Brockton Democrats is you do not agonize, you organize. And that's what today is all about. It's about getting together early, as Steve Lynch just said, to ensure that Donald Trump becomes a footnote in history, that Donald Trump is an aberration, that Donald Trump is not allowed to have an additional four years as the president of our country. That is what Brockton is all about. That is what this gathering is all about. It is mobilizing to make sure that we win in 2020. Now, Steve Lynch is here. And Steve, I don't have to tell you, is a phenomenal congressman. But let me tell you about Steve and I. Steve and I, right now, for the last three days, four days, five days, we should have been on the floor of the House and Senate in emergency session to ensure that we ban assault weapons, ban high-capacity magazines for those weapons, have background checks for every single gun that's purchased in our country, that we make NRA stand for not relevant anymore in American politics. That is what we should be doing. That is what Steve and I want to do for this country. That is the agenda that happens if Democrats win in 2020. We hold the House, we flip the Senate, we dump Donald Trump. It's a simple three-point plan that we need in order to put America on a path for progress once again in 2020. So it's my honor to be here with you once again in Brockton. And so I tell you, each and every one of you here this morning, I am running for re-election to the United States Senate in 2020. And I ask for your support. Partnering with Steve Lynch in the House and Senate, we will work to put in place a progressive agenda for our country. Martin Luther King had a dream. He had a dream that you would not be identified on the basis of your race, of your country of origin. Well, Donald Trump has a dream as well. He has a dream that there will be no more Muslims, no more Mexicans, no more immigrants, that there will be women of color who will be denigrated on an ongoing basis. Donald Trump has a dream for this country, and he has supporters that want to see a continuation and an exacerbation of the problems which he has created. Now, for me, that goes right to the core of who we are as Democrats and who we are as Americans. So we're in a fight, and we know one thing for sure. He and his MAGA supporters are not going to give up, but he has to understand this about the Democrats. We're not giving up. We're going to have the largest turnout that we have ever produced in the history of our country. And we need you to be able to do this. For me, the fight is on because the fight for the future is right now on the line. Leadership is always about the future, and that is what Brockton is all about. We have more than 100,000 Americans who were killed or injured by the epidemic of gun violence in the United States last year. The fight is on. The NRA has the Republican Party in a vice-like grip. In 10 of the last 11 years, we're the warmest ever recorded in the history of the planet. The fight is on. That's why I introduced the Green New Deal with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, so that we could have an intergenerational partnership to fight 
climate change, to fight this incredible threat to the planet. The planet is running a fever. There are no emergency rooms for planets. We have to put in place the preventative programs. We know from scientists, our own scientists, that the planet will warm by 9 degrees Fahrenheit by 2100, 81 years from now. 9 degrees Fahrenheit. It's an existential threat to the planet. We also know that the Republicans say that the Green New Deal is socialism. Well, what do they call 100 years of tax breaks for the oil industry, the coal industry, the natural gas industry? That is socialism, regulatory and tax favoritism. So if that's what they want for their industry, give us some of that socialism for wind and solar and batteries and all electric vehicles and all electric buildings, and we will have union jobs by the millions installing the new energy technologies of the 21st century. Failure is not an option. We know that when little, sick children with cancer can be deported, when 800,000 dreamers live in fear that a knock could come on the door from an ICE agent to deport them. We know that this is the only home that those dreamers have ever had, that those TPS recipients have ever had. The fight is on in the United States. When Donald Trump works to defund Planned Parenthood, the only access that millions of Americans have to the health care they need. The fight is on. When the opioid epidemic and the fentanyl epidemic continues to take tens of thousands of lives, and Donald Trump's solution is to build a wall across our southern border, the fight is on. On. And when Republicans and Donald Trump threaten the workers who want to organize unions in our country, the fight is on, ladies and gentlemen. Because we know on every one of these issues, there is one thing that separates Donald Trump from the people in this room. We are right and he is wrong on every single one of those issues. When Donald Trump says he wants to make America great again, what he means is that he wants to make America hate again. That is what he is talking about. But this fight will only be won if we have a giant blue wave that sweeps across this country. If we have people up and working in a way that they never have before to ensure that we prevent him from having another four years. On climate change, if he gets four more years, it's almost a death sentence for the planet because we will have sat on our hands for eight years and sent a signal to China and India and other countries that they do not have to do anything as well. So we need all of you. We need the Brockton Democrats. We need the Plymouth County Democrats up and fighting and working. This is our generational challenge which has been presented to us. This is the time, this is the place, you are the people who will make this difference. And we come from revolutionaries. The American Revolution was started right here. The abolitionist movement was started right here. The suffragette movement was started right here. The Affordable Care Act revolution was started right here. The gay marriage revolution was started right here. You are the descendants of all of these revolutionaries who rose up in their time in order to ensure that we would have the protections that should be enjoyed by every single American. So it is a great honor to be here with you. My father drove a truck for the Hood Milk Company. My father grew up on the first floor of a triple-decker in Lawrence. And when I ran for the Senate, you grow up where your mother tells your father he's going to live. <laughs> so my mother was from Malden. My father was from Lawrence. So I went up to ring 
the doorbell on the first floor of the triple decker at 88 Phillips Street in Lawrence to see who lives there now where my father and his four brothers and sisters and my grandmother and grandfather lived in the shadow of the mills. And the door opened and a Dominican family came out onto the porch. And the accents were different, but the aspirations the same for that family as existed for the Markey family. And John Markey's son is a United States Senator. I know how fortunate I am, but that was a dream they had, a vision. Steve Lynch, the same way. But let's be honest, everyone in this room feels the same way about their family story, huh? It's an American story. And the names and the places that the countries that we all come from, they're different, but the story in terms of the aspirations are the same. My mother, my mother was gonna be president, she was president of the senior class in high school, but when she was a junior, my, mother, my grandmother died. And there were five sisters, so before Franklin Delano Roosevelt, one of the girls had to stay home. That's the social safety net. So my mother had to be the mother for the three younger daughters, and the other sister had to go off to work. Well, that'll derail a family's plan in Malden. So she's senior class president, but now at home. So she had to raise that family, and then she had me like 20 years later, then my twin brothers in the next year, like at age... 38 and 39, she married my father who drove a truck for the Hood Milk Company. You don't want to be raised by this woman, by the way. She's already raised a family, but <laughs> she knew what she was doing. And what my mother would always say to us is that we were never going to work as hard as my father driving the truck or the immigrants who got off the boat to come here in the family. And we knew we were not going to be as smart as my mother, who did trigonometry and calculus and Latin for fun at the kitchen table, even though she never had trigonometry or calculus. We knew we weren't as smart as my mother. But she would tell us that we would have more opportunities, more opportunities than they had. So I realized how fortunate I was in growing up in that house, in Malden, as a commuter to Boston College, as a commuter the Boston College Law School. We knew we were privileged, even though the kids over in the dorms looked like they had better lives. Huh? The first lawyer I ever met was the first professor who walked into my law school class. I never met a lawyer. My first trip to Washington was to be sworn in as a congressman. I had never been there before I won the seat. I'm from Malden. How was I getting to Washington? So my feeling is, that we have to open up those possibilities for every other family. That everyone is entitled to know that their children have those same opportunities provided to them. A democratization of access to opportunity through education, through healthcare, through housing, and breaking down a discriminatory barrier, then get out of the way, because those kids will absolutely change the world. That's how I see it. That's how I see our country. The Malden and Brockton are not too dissimilar in terms of the kinds of families who live there. But I know, I know that we can do this. I know that the 21st century is going to be better than the 20th and the 19th century. When my mother got Alzheimer's, my father, uh, I said to my father at one point, should we think about a plan for Ma, maybe in a nursing home, and my father said, Eddie, it was an honor that your mother married me. She was a brilliant woman. Your mother is not leaving this living room. Never. And so, for me, this kind of stoic, idealistic commitment to the highest values which we have as families and as a country is something that inspires me and I know that inspires everyone who is here in this room. It's who we have to be as a nation. And it's just the opposite of who Donald Trump is and how he sees our nation operating. So we should be that shining place on a hill 
We should have this incredible Brockton, Plymouth County Assembly be the leaders, the cutting edge, fighting for the future. And I will be there with you. I'll be with Deb Garland. I'll be with the entire Democratic City Committee. I'm glad we're honoring Red and Jean Sullivan. Mayor Rodriguez, and Steve already mentioned it, there was no one who ever worked harder for the city of Brockton than Mayor Carpenter. He was down there fighting for every opioid program, every economic development program, getting a disproportionate share of those funds out of Washington. To Senator Mike Brady, to uh, Representative uh, Jerry Cassidy and Claire Cronin, Michelle Dubois, to Tom O'Brien and Greg Hanley, John Buckley, Matt McDonough, to Bobby Creeden, Bobby McCarthy, Alan Pesovich, John Walsh, all of you. Um, I pledge to you that I will give you everything that I have, everything, if you give me the honor of representing you in the United States Senate. You know, when we get elected, when Steve and I When Steve and I get elected, we get a card, and this card allows us to vote on the floor of the United States House of Representatives and the United States Senate. Many of you have union cards in your pocket. Many of you have cards that identify you and the organizations who you represent. Well, every single day on the floor of the Senate, this has been your card, voting for your interests here in Plymouth County and in the city of Brockton. And I give you my word that every day on the floor of the Senate, I will be your voice, I will be your vote, and I thank you so much for the great honor of being here today. Thank you so, so much. Thank you.